I'm gonna start off asking who believes in ghosts. Yeah? All right, let's do it. Good. Okay. So my topic today is why we always need ghosts. Now, this story was located on CANN Current Events. It was done by Colin Vickley, and he wrote books. Um, one was called Ghostland in American History in Haunted Places. And he was using this story as a social commentary to ask people their opinion on why we actually need ghosts. Now, that kind of seems silly because when we think of ghosts, like, you know, it's just like a Halloween type of thing or um, we actually don't think about them that much. But the definition of a ghost is a dead person that is believed to appear or become a manifest to the living, typically as a presence or a paranormal image. Now, I've asked a lot of people what they, what they think about when we think of ghosts. It's Casper the Friendly Ghost or ghosts dressed up in sheets, eyes cut out. I'm pretty sure everyone's done that as a kid. But there's actually three reasons and that people use ghosts every day in their lives. It's first to frighten people, cultural practices, and grieving. Now, the first thing I'd like to talk about is frightening people. Um, this is a good example for a story. I don't know, have any of you actually heard about this story, know this movie? Okay. So it was based on a true story. It was about a guy named Ronald that actually killed all members of his family. Um, it was based on like a native burial ground where they used to torture people. And so he, after it happened, he actually told the police and made statements that he was uh, told to do it. He had voices in his head. And after he was arrested, um, another family moved in and they had the same experiences. And these, these pictures were actually originally from um, the true one. Uh, Hollywood made it into a movie because this story actually terrified people so bad that they started making 17 films about it, 10 books, and people were terrified to go near this house. So now a lot of people are like, oh yeah, there's a haunted house down the block, Let, let's go in it, and everyone's like, no way, and it's a lot of reasons like this. Um, another way is, have you ever gotten a text saying if you don't text this to 10 people, a ghost is going to come to your phone and murder oh, yeah. you? Have you guys ever seen so those? <laughs> so uh, another point is Facebook actually used ghosts a lot to frame people, send things like that just to give people a scare. And the other way is a lot of games. We actually tried this game, it kind of creeped me out, but the history, the history of it is there was a woman named Mary, she was the sister of Queen Elizabeth, and she was accused of witchcraft because she, had a, she looked like she was pregnant, she had the symptoms of being pregnant. It turns out she was just getting like fat and wasn't pregnant, so they actually executed her, and she, they made her stare at herself and watched herself die as it happened. So now there's actually a game called Bloody Mary where you stand in front of the mirror and say it three times, Bloody Mary, and supposedly she's supposed to come and kill you. So a lot of people use this as like a history uh, game to scare people. Um, another game, it's more of a cultural thing. It's called a Ouija board. Does anyone know what that is? Yeah, <laughs> Chris. Okay. Well. A man named Elijah actually invented the Ouija board. It was used back um, in the World War because they were trying to contact people to tell them what to do to gain weapons. And they believed that um, using the type of board, when they contacted them, that soldiers from the past life would come and help them create victory upon like the enemies they were trying to kill. So now people actually use this to talk to um, ghosts in the afterlife. Um, they made a lot of movies about it, about how they say it's demonic, and now they make Barbie Ouija boards, and just because it's pink, it's okay to talk to demons type of thing, but <laughs> as long, I feel as long as you use it respectfully, it's okay, but um, there is a lot of dangers and circumstances playing this game. Um, a lot of cultural beliefs is spiritualism. Um, a lot of does anyone know what a medium is? Like, you all have heard of a medium? Okay. So a medium uses psychic abilities to see the past, the present, the future um, experiences just to contact people with the dead. Um, a lot, I've done a lot of research and a lot of police actually have a lot of cases where they use psychics to find dead people. 
And this was one psychic that the police actually used a lot. Her name was Nancy Meyer. Her first case was there was an elderly man. He went wandering off in the woods and nobody could find him. And they were saying like, oh, he's still alive. And she knew he was dead. And they actually found him. Like he wasn't harmed in any way, but um, because of his age, he just wandered off. And ever since then, she helped uh, the police do, I think there's over 10 different cases of finding dead people. And she found all of them except two of them were alive. So she just says she has like dreams and visions and she uses ghosts to like physically talk to the ghosts to help find people. Has anyone heard of this girl, seen her <laughs> reality <laughs> show? Okay, so she was in Lethbridge um, a couple months back actually. I went and saw her and you know, at first you're kind of like skeptical, like I don't know, she could just be doing it for fame, for whatever, but she actually made a lot of people cry. She contacted a lot of people that I was very familiar with. So she's on an American television show, um, her TV series called Long Island Medium, but she said that clients, fans, and the media also asked me to describe how I receive information. And she was also saying she doesn't really know how she does it, but she gets like visions in her head and she sees things. And she uses ghosts to help people move on as a type of like grieving process. And um, there was a lot of cops actually went to her for help too, because like ghosts, everyone thinks ghosts are bad, but they're just like us, they're people, they need to be heard, they, they have ways to communicate. And that's what a lot of people are afraid of. I think it's just because we can't, like comprehend like what's in our head when we wrap around it because like nobody knows if there's actually people walking around pretending like they're still alive or not. Um, this is another one is a lot of gypsies actually started this as witch doctors and they actually use a lot of objects to capture souls. Um, and has anyone ever heard of Annabelle or Robert the doll? Heard some of the stories? Well, they're actual ghosts or spirit, spirits that have actually gone into dolls as objects. Witch doctors, when people were sick and they thought they were possessed, witch doctors would actually do um, a ritual where they would actually suck the soul out of your body and put them into dolls. And then they would poke them and they would burn them to kill the demons. So they use it as a lot of cultural ways, like how to like cleanse people. Um, a lot of people just use um, the word ghosts more as spirit presence because when somebody passes on sometimes you get that feeling when you feel like someone's still around you or they're watching you or anything like that they actually use it for closure when I was um, in the bomber we would physically have objects move in the room and not expect it like it was really freaky but it happens but they're all I can say is spirits they they're kind of stuck in limbo here. They're caught between both worlds. And a lot of people disagree or agree with ghosts, but it's better to feel like an angel or a ghost is with you. That's part of the, part of the grieving process. Does anyone know who Amanda Todd is? You do? Okay, well, just a brief description of her. She was cyberbullied and she did commit suicide. And this was a comment written on one of the shrines on Facebook. If you read this in another life, I miss you. You're wonderfully and beautiful smile, really. I miss you, Amanda Todd, and I will always remember you forever till the day I die. People actually use a lot of media with the ghosts more than they think, because when somebody passes on, you're gonna go to their wall and be like, we miss you, you know, I wish I could have helped you. There is like over five to six different shrines on Facebook for this girl, and they're like, if you're in the afterlife reading this, I hope that you can hear me. I wish I could have been there for you. So physically, people write even on media and talk to themselves and pretend that they're talking to somebody because they feel like they can hear them in another life. So people actually use that as a type of ghost closure, as they call it. Um, CNN asked, do we still need ghosts? The short answer is yes. In the digital age where science and logic rules were all the information at our fingertips, you might think that ghost stories would have gradually died out by now, but it turns out it's just the complete opposite because today we still use objects, we still try to talk to the dead, we feel things that we can't explain, and I, I just feel like based on your beliefs, believing in the dead or not, that somehow we're still connected with the dead. 